hi, hello. It is your host, Emily Smart, and we are back in the crib for another episode of In the Making. I am so excited to be back with another roundtable for you guys today. I was spending time watching the Super Bowl. I finally recovered from Rihanna's halftime performance, and it is time to talk to athletes from across the pond who have come to America and back and trying to make it to the top levels of their respective sports. Our roundtable guests today are going to include not one, but two USF Pro 2000 drivers, Liram Zendeli and Francesco Pizzi. And we're also going to be chatting with a soccer player, Brian Gilbert, but that's not all. We're also going to be having a one-on-one interview with none other than Louis Foster, last year's USF Pro 2000 winner, who is going to be competing in Indy Next this season. And now let's get into our news and notes so we can get to what you're all waiting for. Over the weekend, Jacob Douglas took home five wins in the 2023 Academy Winter Race Series. Max Taylor did swipe one, but the two of them are looking to carry that momentum into the USF Pro 2000 Series as it kicks off in St. Pete in just two weeks. So as always, make sure to follow us on all social media platforms. Kick it back here with us in the crib, and we will keep you updated on all of the latest info regarding championships as they get started. So let's turn things over into our roundtable. Super excited to talk to today's guests. First up, one of our many newcomers to the USF Pro Championships. We have Francesco Pizzi. He was part of the LMP2 winning team at the Rolex 24 this year. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me and I'm happy to be here. And let's get into our next guest. He will also be racing in the USF Pro Championships for the first time this season after starting off his career competing in Europe. Hello, Liram Zendeli. It's nice to have you on with us today. Hi, nice to be here. Yeah, thanks also for inviting me. And last but certainly not least, he is not a racer, but a soccer player playing currently with the Macclesfield FC Junior Academy. A warm welcome to none other than Brian Gilbert. Thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, Thanks for having me. All right, so let's get started with this roundtable discussion. I want to get into the background, and I think that Let's go ahead and start with you, Francesco. Tell me a little bit about how it was getting started. What are some of the differences in racing in another country versus racing in America? I mean, generally, I started off quite well with that one, of course. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's a completely different world for starting from the tracks. You know, every track here is kind of a specific to its own and in, in Europe is kind of, every track is kind of similar and especially when we talk about you know these road courses oval city circuits there is many differences we all we're mostly used to road courses in Europe so that's already a mainly a big difference the tires are very different from what we're used to and uh, yeah I mean brakes at the end the chassis is it is what it is every car is its specifics I already drove two different ones in some years in some year and uh, yeah I mean best way to start and uh, hopefully we can carry on that way and I hope we can yeah can enjoy American racing on its uh, the differences from what I'm used to and Liram what would you say your experiences were were they similar different um I think Francesco summed it up pretty well um he's been here for quite a while um I came there to to test on two tracks, um, one racetrack and one kind of, um, yeah, uh, it is a road course, but uh, it feels like a bumpy, um, uh, yeah, street street circuit. Um, yeah, but it's different. You have so many bumps on the racetracks. Um, you gotta get used to it. And also the car is different. I was used to more downforce, uh, higher downforce cars, uh, more powerful cars. And now I have to to do a little step back. But um, yeah, I'll take the I'll take the challenge and happy and looking also forward to to the season. 
For sure. And Brian, you know, you're kind of in a similar situation as well, where even though you're not a racer, you are competing in a sport that's very popular in another country and is done a very different way over here in the States. So tell me a little bit about what the differences were that you've experienced and how you might relate to these guys a little bit. Um, one of the biggest things for me, uh, coming from Florida, playing in Florida, the weather is completely different here. Um, it's very cold and rainy, so you have to adjust to the way the ball skips on the pitch. And then also um, the passion and the physicality here, they're very physical compared to the way that we play uh, back home in the States. So that's been the biggest adjustment for me here. Uh, this is my second year, second season. We I had a, a first season, but Obviously, COVID cut it short, so this is my second full season this year. All right, so tell me more about what that experience was like for you. You know, I'm I'm not exactly familiar with all of the intricacies that are, you know, involved in getting to the top level of soccer because it is something that's so much more complicated and than many just casual sports viewers know. So if you could explain that ladder system to me a little bit more and, you know, break down how it is that you make it to the top and where you would say that you're at as far as progress right now. Uh, so currently I play for Macclesfield FC, so that's a semi-professional team. Um, there's a pyramid system and it stems from, so National League is like the fifth division and then there's League Two, League One, Championship, and then the Premier League. And then below that is like non-league. So Macclesfield, uh, they were called Macclesfield Town before. They uh, went bankrupt during COVID and they had rebuilding uh, to have new owners. And they're starting a non-league, which is semi-pro. So you basically just work your way up and just hope that, you know, you get looks from higher teams full-time programs, more professional sides. Right, and I think that, you know, Liram and Francesco, you guys are both kind of in the same position right now. You're starting out here with a new team this season. What has that journey like been for you guys, and how have you potentially seen the racing world change since COVID, post-COVID? Mm, well, for, I feel like in motorsports, um, the COVID didn't do is well, it had its impact uh, when there was the time of COVID and isolation whatsoever. Um, and the seasons that started a bit later, but since then, um, right now when the fans are back on, on the yeah um, tribunes, uh, everything is back to normal. Um, obviously for me and probably also for Francesco, this here is a, is a different world. Um, so when we were racing in Europe, it was about getting to Formula One. Um, and right now, I think our both aim is to to kind of get to IndyCar. Um, and well, the ladder it doesn't change. It's just a, it's at the end it's a, another destination where we wanna end up, or at least for me. And um, that's that's the road you have to to take then. How much would you say you know just building on that? How much would you say choosing the right team impacts your performance and your ability to make it to the next level with Indy? Mm, well, that's a f factor in motorsport, which is obviously the most important. Mm -hmm. um, we see the best drivers um, not making it with uh, the wrong team, let's say, um, or also, you'd say, not the best drivers with the right team getting some good results. Um, so yeah, having a good team on uh, on your side is, is very important. And um, I mean, also, you, you can build, uh, you can build up together. And uh, but for for us, I'm pretty sure we are on a on a good side. We have a good team with TJ Speed, and uh, I'm very confident that we'll have a successful full year this year. And Francesco, how have you you know bonded with your new teammates like Lirum in you know getting ready for the season? Even though you guys do compete against each other, it is a team effort there. So what are you doing to make sure that you guys build some chemistry up and can go into this race at St. Pete with a clear, sh clear head on your shoulders? 
I mean, we already knew Lirium because we raced together in Europe. Uh, this year we did one, last year we did one race together. And uh, yeah, we got on well, I think. Uh, but of course, for I think for both me and him, it's good to have, I mean, we're both, I think we're both competitive and we're pushing each other to go faster every time we get on the track. So of course, sharing data with each other and the videos and else still the driver as well to go faster. So I think we can work together on that. Of course, everyone wants to win his own, but I think for the team, it will be good to have two teammates pushing. Of course, Christian as well, uh, who's uh, a little bit less experienced than us, but in testing has been as quick uh, as us. So I think we can uh, definitely uh, improve as a team. We have everyone has different characteristics. You know, if we do the same lap time, there is one of us is going to do one corner better and one of us is going to do another corner better. So then uh, it's just keep pushing each other really to the next uh, step and uh, keep on going faster every time we go on track. And how would you say, you know, you all are kind of in a similar position where you are older in the sense of the people that you're playing around in your sport. So how do you handle, you know, still being a younger guy, but having that much more responsibility in a veteran role and, you know, leading some of these younger players and athletes who are coming up through the ranks. And uh, Francesco, I don't know if you want to take this one. I've always been the youngest where I've raced. So here I'm not going to be either the oldest, either the youngest. I think I'm a little bit in the middle for the first time. So uh, still a rookie, but uh, I mean, of course, sometimes is we can use our experience to our favor. I think more, more than actual age, let's say, uh, deficit is more of an experience deficit because of mm -hmm. course we raced at very high levels in Europe so let's say coming here maybe against some guys that have not raced in such competitive series before and as rookie as me and Lirium but clearly with a lot less experience I mean Lirium has uh, even more experience than me in that case so maybe you can say more but uh, yeah for me I mean the first time I'm not the youngest in well in my case uh, I think I'm one of the older guys um... I've had some some years in single seaters. Uh, I've reached quite a high level uh, with some success, and uh, but at the end, um, it truly helps to be quick and also, um, let's say, when, when there's tracks which yeah you don't know very well, maybe it's gonna be in in my favor to uh, yeah that I'm a bit more experienced. But as Francesco said, um, this is another world here. The people, the driver, they know they know all the tracks and uh, have this slight av advantage on, on their side. Um, but yeah, we as a team, we will push to um, to get where we where we have to be at the top. And Liram, you're going to be experiencing some new tracks this year. Which ones are you most excited for? And what's the prep been like getting ready for St. Pete in a few weeks? So one thing I'm very excited for is the oval. It's going to be my first time driving oval. Um, yeah, just curious to see how it is. Um, and then I'm not sure. I mean, Kota as a F Formula One track surely will be will be nice to drive on. But honestly, the most excited I'm for uh, I'm for is the, the oval. And what about you, Francesco? Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, very similar to Lirium, let's say, because, the, of course, we never drove Oval before. I've been a big fan of the Indy 500 for the last few years. So it's going to be, let's say, fun at least to try and learn something new because, of course, every time we get on with the challenge for us, it's always we always enjoy more, I think. And uh, it's a new challenge. It's a new challenge for me, I think. I like street circuits, so I'm looking forward to Toronto and St. Pete at the start of the season as well. Because I only got to drive, of course, only, but it's Monaco. I only got to drive in Monaco as a street circuit, so another uh, one will add to my uh, books. And Brian, you know, soccer is one of those sports where the game's not necessarily going to change as you climb up through the ranks, but obviously that intensity really is what changes. How do you prepare for that? Because it isn't something that's different, like a structure of the field or the pitch or anything like that. How do you prepare for you know, challenges that are out of your control and challenges that vary? Um, I would say just uh, you work on that intensity in training. So you try you try and train like how you're going to play in a match. 
And then also you just want to watch the players that are playing at the highest level, the players in your position that you know you can learn from. So, like, for example, I play center midfield. I'm a center midfielder, so I try and watch those players in my position so I can learn from them and take what they do at the highest level and put it in my game. What's the best advice that a pro athlete ever gave you that really drives you and pushes you day to day? Just any, any sport or. Oh, any sport. Yeah. Anything at all. Yeah, for sure. Um, Honestly, I'm a big fan of Kobe. Um, Just his mentality, uh, just how he always wants to put in the extra hours. He always wants to work hard because, you know, like people say, everybody has a, a talent but you do have to work hard because you can't just go to training and practice for two hours and think you're going to become and reach the highest level. You have to put in that work off the pitch. You know, you have to do the stuff that people don't want to do, the extra gym sessions, extra training sessions and stuff like that. So I would say that Mamba mentality Kobe had, it's always been something that motivated me. And Liram, you know, like Brian was saying, training is something that's critical, but not many people realize how intense training is for race car drivers. And I was wondering if you have experienced, you know, has training for this series become more challenging because you are going to be competing in a new um, in a new championship this year? Yeah, I think uh, people underestimate. Um, how fit race car drivers have to be. Uh, It's a different kind of training. I mean, we have to build our neck muscle, our shoulders, arms. uh, They have to be quite strong and the core stability. Uh, It's a bit different than other sports. Uh, But I mean, every every kind of sport has its own special uh, workout. Uh, But still, uh, we we work out a lot. Uh, We have to be very fit because, I mean, we we raced at... um, high speed uh so 250 300 kph um, for like an hour um and then inches away from other cars um and uh let's say yeah dangerous sport um so you you have to have that focus all the time up um, for the whole race you have to be sharp you have to be fit so um we have to put also quite a lot of work um yeah in the gym and uh to stay fit at all times. Right, so that brings me to Francesco. How do you prepare for 24 hours of racing? How What was the training process like for you there? And you know, I'm, I'm assuming that you would lose sleep over that, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the thing is that I knew I would do the race only one week before basically I had to leave so I didn't have all the time I wanted to get ready physically let's say I was likely I'm already let's say decently trained uh, before but uh, yeah I mean for a 24 hour there is no training because you're never going to stay awake for 24 hours uh, the whole time and uh, of course when you get there it's a completely different thing because even when you have a long time off like I did I had you know uh, a time where I could sleep probably you still never really sleep because you're always thinking about the race so <laughs> i couldn't drive uh, by the night for uh himsa rules because we skipped the night session and i was a rookie in the in the 24 hours so this the, who didn't who doesn't drive the night session cannot compete in the night so i slept but still uh, you're always thinking about the race you always think about doing the what's going on and you know the, the only thing i woke up with when i went to sleep we we're leading the race and then i woke up three laps back so then I'm saying I'm not sleeping ever again. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, you know, I wanted to, mi- <clears throat> excuse me, I wanted to turn this over to Brian because I'm a high school sports reporter. Soccer is one of the sports that I watch the most. And I know that I'm ready to KO after I watch them run up and down the field all the time. How do you, <laughs> how do you keep the drive when it literally seems like there is all hope gone. You have no endurance left in your legs. How do you keep pushing and how do you keep going during that last stretch to get the win? Honestly, you just have to to train. So we, I try and train to make sure that I can play 120 minutes because if a game does go into extra time, like overtime, you do have to play 120 minutes, which is a long time, an extra 30 minutes on top of 
the 90 that you already have to play with one break at halftime. So really, it's a mental thing, I think. If you train it, then it's like a, a mind versus body thing, you know? Because there are some times you really, like, say it's the last, you know, five minutes of a match. You think that you can't run or you, you're going to cramp up or something, but you just have to mentally push through it because, you know, as you said, like, soccer is a lot of running. Mm-hmm. So you just have to make sure you're physically in shape and have the right meals and have enough water the, the night before, you know, your match and eat the right stuff the day of to make sure you have the energy and the fuel to, like, play a full match. Liram, Francesco, are y'all soccer fans at all? Soccer um, fans, soccer players in your free time? I've actually played soccer for a while when I was uh, younger. Um, and on a pretty high level, but then I decided for motorsports. Uh, Why racing? I feel well. Uh, sorry, Brian. <laughs> I felt <laughs> I felt like it's it's more special, but also I think it was not more the adrenaline. Um, I mean, in soccer, you also have the adrenaline going on the field, and it's just a different kind of adrenaline. But I really liked the speed since I since I was a kid. And um, I think also it was a, a small direction of uh, of my father, who also did some karting. So, um, yeah, all those kind of factors. And um, yeah, but right now, I, for me uh, personally, I don't watch so so much football, uh, soccer anymore. What about you, Francesca? I never played soccer because I've always been very bad since I was a kid. So I, I, I still <laughs> that. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, I like I like the sport. I'm a big fan of Roma, uh, my home team, and uh, yeah, I just follow I follow them mostly. Um, a little bit of Premier League, I like the Premier League as well. I'm I'm a fan of soccer, but I don't really I can't really play very well. I can play decently, but if you put me in a team of say my pros, I'm not gonna touch the ball once probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, I feel like uh, if you wanna, so when I wanted to follow uh, soccer. You have so many matches um, that if you miss some of them, you will not understand the whole thing, the whole season. And this is what mm-hmm. sometimes made me mad. And then I didn't continue watching it. So, for example, I live in Germany. We have the Bundesliga here. And uh, yeah. so if you don't watch like five or ten games, you don't understand everything. And then I'm like, yeah, just I'm I'm not going to watch it anymore, you know. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of matches during yeah. the season. They play a lot of matches. Do you have a professional team that you really look to and like to watch, Brian? I mean, other than obviously the home team. Anybody else? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, growing up, growing up, I've always been a Chelsea fan. We're not we're not doing too well right now, but we have won the Champions League and a few trophies since you know I've been a fan of them. But my idol Didier Drogba played for Chelsea, so that's the team I've always supported. Hey, you can always tell that you are a true fan if you are willing to claim them when things are not going well. So kudos to you. And I hope (laughs) that that gets better for you. Um, But thank you all all so much for joining us today for this roundtable. It was awesome to talk to you about getting to the top level of your sport. And I think once again, we have figured out that we all have a common ground here no matter what we're doing in life. So Extremely thankful to have you guys on today. Wishing you the best of luck in your seasons moving forward. And thank you so much for joining us here in the crib. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, y'all. All right. And now we are going to turn things over to our one on one interview with none other than Louis Foster. He came overseas and kickstarted his career in a major fashion. Louis Foster won last year's USF Pro 2000 Championship in an impressive fashion, logging a series-high seven race wins on his way to a title. After getting a scholarship from the win to advance to Indy Next, he signed with Andretti Autosport to see if he can replicate that debut year magic. Louis, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I know you were saying that you have a super busy schedule. You were recently in New Zealand. What was that experience like for you, and how was it helping you get ready for this season, your first in Indy Next? 
Yeah, it was obviously, um, we did three weeks of the Castro Toyota Formula Regional Oceana Championship in New Zealand. Um, oh, it's a different car to what I've driven before. It's the Formula Regional car, uh, the Tata FD60. So um, it was a different challenge. Um, obviously racing on new circuits, in a new car, new team, etc., which is, again, what I had to get used to last year and what I'm going to have to get used to this year again. So it's all good preparation, really. Um, and, you know, a lot of drivers know that there's nothing better than seat time to prepare yourself to prepare yourself for an upcoming season. And um, there wasn't much testing to be done in Indian next this year uh, because of the new tyres coming in. So um, we just thought it would be a really good idea to do the championship as kind of a, you know, warm myself up and get ready for the season type thing. And what differences have you seen with your new team your first year with Andretti? Like you were saying, you know, I would imagine that there is a different standard there. So what has your experience been like getting used to that and, you know, acclimating to a new team environment? Yeah, so obviously last year I ran with exclusive autosport, which is a great team. But, you know, obviously Andretti's, you know, a massive jump up. They're a, they're a global team. They've got race teams all around the world. Um they're currently looking at getting into Formula One with uh, Cadillac. So, yeah, there's just a massive, massive bunch of expertise in, 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 in the whole Andretti, you know, workshop. So it's it's great to be with them. We've done, I think, four tests so far, and they've gone really well. I've just been learning the car, getting used to the team, and, um, yeah, really, that's kind of that's kind of it so far. So uh, I've really enjoyed it, and, um, you know, from, from where we stand right now, I think we've got a good chance to have a good season. You know, winning aside, obviously that's a goal. What are you really hoping to accomplish this season and do to establish yourself at this next level? Um, I really just want to be able to impress the team at Andretti and be able to show them, you know, after the silly amount of years I've been driving for my age, um, the you know, I have what it takes to be able to reach the top in IndyCar, really, um, which, yes, would coincide with winning races and, and hopefully the championship but yeah I guess just to just to learn about the paddock more and the teams and whatnot because again I've only this will be my second year in America so I'm not you know a seasoned vet quite yet I wouldn't say so um yeah just still learning really there's still a lot to learn about American racing for me obviously being in Europe the majority of my career what are the biggest differences that you've noticed including track food uh between Europe and America yeah <laughs> Um, well, track food in America, firstly, is, uh, I mean, it's, you've got Cheers a lot wisely. more like, hot dog and, there's more hot dog and burger vans and stuff like that. Um, there isn't that much of that in Europe. Um, but I tend to have like, um, meals with the team and whatnot, they order stuff in. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's not much different. You still try to eat as healthy as you can and healthy food is the same whether you're in Europe or, uh, or America. Um, but I would say probably the biggest difference between like racing in Europe and racing in America is a very slight difference. I think I've, I've mentioned this quite a lot on different interviews where people ask me the same question. And really what I tend to say is that it doesn't really matter where in the world you race. Everyone has the same goal within motorsport is to win. So you're going to be entering a team or a championship or anything you do and everyone wants to be the best there. So everyone's very stri- uh, very determined, they're very driven to do exactly that. I would say personally the biggest difference between America and, and European racing is probably like the the way they go about doing that and getting the most out of um, performance. I think America is a lot more enjoyable as a driver and it's as someone who works in the industry. I think there's a, it's a bit more of a, um, not a laid back approach, but like a, you know, I think in America they like to have a bit more fun and they like to actually enjoy it. Whereas in Europe, in my years in Europe, it was extremely um, intense, which sure is, is is good for driver development and, and, and can be good for competition. But it does take a lot of strain on you as a driver when you know you don't really have any like breaks. You know, you're constantly being worked to the bone. Whereas in America, you work hard but you play hard. If you know what I mean. Um, so I thoroughly enjoy it a lot more than European racing. What is your favorite win in America compared to your favorite win or race moment when you were competing around the world? Um, my favorite win, I would say all time, would be Spa 2021. Uh, no, sorry, 2020 in Euroformula. Um, 
I hopped in Double R's car for one round um, just to practice. Um, well, funny story, actually, that weekend, my teammate was Ben Pedersen, who um, is now an Indy car, obviously. But we both did a round of Euro Formula with Double R, and it was, you know, completely random, never driven that track, never driven that car. We jumped in on the second to last round of the year, and I managed to win race two and get Double R their first ever race win in that championship. So that's my favorite win, I would say, out of all my wins. Um, and then my favorite win in America, which was my probably least expected win, was the first oval at IRP. Again, coming from Europe, I've never done an oval before. It was something brand new to me. And we qualified, I think, third, which I was over the moon with. And going into the race, I was going to be completely happy with like coming top three. Because, again, it was my first ever oval race. I had very little experience of it. And we actually managed to win that race. And that was definitely my favorite win last year because it was just so unexpected and so kind of unbelievable. I still I still struggle to understand how it happened, to be honest. But, um, yeah, it was great. So that's probably my favorite win from last year. And, Ro, would you say that that switch flipped for you to really, you know, for lack of a better term, kick it into gear and make sure that you could come out and see consistent success after a little bit of a lull? Uh, you mean during last year's season? Yes, last season. Um, well, for me, my biggest issue last year or the, my, my biggest kind of thing I had to work on was working with the tires. Uh, I've never driven on Cooper tires before, um, which is what we ran last year in, in Indy Pro 2000. Mm -hmm. And obviously all of my competition, majority of them have been on Cooper tires for three plus years. So I was having to get used to those because I'd just come from obviously Europe where we were running Michelins. Um, and the tire was definitely difficult to get used to. And I mean, I'm not going to expose any trade secrets here, but um, it, we, once I figured it out and I understood exactly how it worked, especially in the qualifying stages of the tire when they're new, um, that's when we really started to, to pick up some points and win, win a lot of races. Um, just when I started qualifying that a little bit better and started at the front, because I knew I had the pace from the start of the year in the races we just needed to make sure we nailed qualifying and once we got that nailed from then on it was pretty plain sailing just qualify pole and win the race how much have you seen having knowledge about your car as a driver not just how to race and how to do it skillfully but knowledge about the actual tires the build of the car all of that how have you seen that really help your performance and help you get to this next level do you think it's important for younger drivers to actually learn the mechanics of the car yeah, I think for sure, especially if you're trying to set up a car. Um, again, it's something that will come with experience. You can't really expect a kid brand new in F4 to understand all these complex things about aerodynamics and, and, and ride height levels and camber and, and dampers and all this stuff. They're not going to understand that. It takes time. Um, and you just slowly gain this like pool of knowledge over the years. It's like anything really in life, you know. The more you, the more you do something, the more you're going to learn. And after, you know, this is this was my fourth or fourth or fifth year in single seaters, so after all that time, I've just slowly learned and learned and learned different things. Um, so, yeah, I would definitely say it's important. I mean, the more you understand, the better conversations you can have with your engineer and make a better decision on where you want to take the setup with the car to be able to get the maximum performance out of it. So, yeah, I mean, to answer your question something that I think a young driver should definitely be thinking about trying to learn. And what race are you most excited to compete in this season? Um, I really liked the street circuits last year. I really enjoyed it. It was the first time I ever ran them. Uh, and we had good success in the street circuits. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to probably the new Detroit because it's going to be a brand new circuit for everyone. It's going to be a level playing field. Obviously, there's a few second-year drivers who have got the one-up, who have got knowledge of difference of some circuits that I have never been to before. So I think probably Detroit. Um, but yeah, also Iowa, the Oval, also looks quite a lot of fun. I'm a bit scared, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And is there a track that you're excited to return to? Um... Yeah, I, I'm definitely looking forward to going back to St. Pete, to be honest. That's mm -hmm. round one. I'm definitely looking forward to that one. Um, and then obviously also um, IMS, Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the the, uh, the the road course there. That would be good fun, obviously, being in the home of IndyCar and, and being able to compete with all those fans. So 
I'm looking forward to that one as well. How has your mentality changed? You know, you're right here at the edge of the start of the season. How has your mentality changed from last year to this year? Do you feel more confident? Yeah, I mean, obviously coming in as the, the, the scholarship driver and as the champion of the previous um, championship, it does give me confidence to be able to go into it, um, especially against the other people that have moved up with me. You know, I already know that I've beaten them once, so I know I can do it again. Um, but yeah, obviously there are some kids in there who are in their second year and they're going to be hard to beat. But, you know, I'm, I'm pretty relaxed, pretty confident. I mean, I'm still, again, I'm, I'm, I'm fresh on the ground. I'm, I'm not a season vet as I said you know I'm going into this championship really open-minded and trying to learn as much as I can um because I've never done this this championship before so although I have won the previous championship it's uh still going to be kind of going in as if I almost know nothing and trying to soak in as much as I can is it ever hard sometimes to go to the guys who do have more experience because again and again I've heard you say experience is really what makes a difference here is it hard to ever to go to those veteran guys and ask for advice on how you could potentially be better? Because, I mean, obviously you can ask your team guys that, but when you're in individual competition, I feel like the tensions probably change a little bit. Yeah, so, yeah, it is probably difficult to go and ask a competitor for help. I mean, within the team, obviously with Andretti, we're extremely, you know, like inclusive as a team. We're a whole team environment. So when one driver learns something, it's always shared between all the other drivers. The entire team can do a better job as a whole, um, which is obviously really important um, for the team championship. Um, so, yeah, between between drivers in, in a team, there's definitely discussions about um, the car balance and what we're doing at each corner and stuff like that. So if I have a question with a team, from a teammate, then obviously... They'll, they'll tell me what they're doing and vice versa. But aside from that, I've got um, a few friends in IndyCar that I know that I can I can kind of take from their knowledge. I try not to bother them too much, but if I do, if I am stuck somewhere, then I'll uh, I'll text some of them. Have there been any USF pro drivers who have come to you for advice that are younger? You know, now that you've actually qualified for Indy Next, or there guys who have come to you and said, "Hey, is there anything that?" you could recommend to me to, you know, potentially stay cons- stay consistent, keep my mind right? Um, yeah, so there's there's a few drivers that have been my friends before I even won the championship or even did any pro that I'm looking at doing it this year, and I'm definitely going to be helping them as much as I can. Um, you know, I'm living to it. I'm sure they'll do fine, but, you know, if they come to me with any questions or whatnot, I'll, I'm happy to answer and try and help them out. But, um yeah, I had a few people come to me, but you know, I'm not, I'm not a driver coach. I just, I just know how to do it, I guess. And when you have the success that you have, or when you, when you have the success that you had last year, you know, like you said, this year you have to be a little bit more open-minded. You have to be potentially willing to take that loss. How are you keeping? How are you keeping your mind open, knowing that the odds are stacked against you a little bit more this season? I wouldn't say they're stacked against me more this season than last season. Mm-hmm. I mean, coming into last season, no one knew who I was. Uh, I was a random kid from Europe who's just come to America, and we ended up winning the championship, whereas this season we're going in as the previous year's champion. So I definitely say that the, the, the odds are, are still, you know, definitely nearer to our favor. I think it's still going to be a very tough championship, and I think it's going to be hard to win it in the first year. That's my aim to win it the first year. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, again, like I said, I'm, I'm a rookie in this championship now. Um, I've just got to learn as much as I can, as fast as I can, and try and catch up because it happens in every championship. The second year guys who are going to be who are doing this championship for the second year are going to be fast initially, and it's going to be me and all the other rookies that have got to play catch up. So as long as as long as we can we can kind of get to their level as fast as possible, then you know, come the second half of the season, that's when that's when hopefully me and other second year driver uh, first year drivers should should really strive and like you said you know nobody really knew who you were last season and then you come out have this monstrous success you don't feel like that kind of puts a target on your back coming into this season a little bit you know i feel like there's that much more of a drive to want to beat louis foster because you are this new name and you haven't i mean you haven't had the opportunity to fully establish yourself yet yeah, I mean, probably more likely the the drivers who progressed with me last year from Indy Pro and now are in Indy Next. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I'm sure they would love to be able to beat me and be able to prove that, you know, they just had a bad year last year. But I, 
I don't think that happened. So what would you say the biggest thing that you learned last season that you're going to take into this season? Um, I mean, racetrack wise, probably ovals, um, getting used to those. And obviously I've had a nice kind of toe in the water experience last year with them. I think there's a quite a big ramp up in oval speeds, uh, this year in the Indy next. So I think I've got to try and take as much knowledge I learned last year into those and try and do as best as I can. Again, I'm still super fresh to ovals. I've done two race weekends in them. So, you know, there's still something that I really, really feel uncomfortable with because of the lack of experience I've had. Um, but I'm just trying to get uh, ahead of the curve as much as possible, really, and try and just do the best I can with the limited experience that I have. Um, and then aside from that, really just kind of the American way of, of American way of racing. I mean, now I know a lot more people in the paddock, and I'm a bit more into the into the kind of indie car paddock scene. So I kind of feel a bit more at home now. So I'm definitely looking forward to this year a lot more. Whereas last year, you know, I came here and I, apart from my teammates in my team, I didn't know anyone else really. Um, so it was quite difficult for me um, to kind of get around the paddock and talk to people really. Um, whereas this year, you know, there's going to be a lot more friendly faces around the paddock, which is which is nice. Who would you say your favorite driver is? Who are you most excited to see and hang out? Uh, what, in Indy Next or in IndyCar? Either or. Um, Take your pick. I'm quite good friends with Callum, Ilot, and IndyCar. Obviously being like the only two Brits in America at the moment. Um, so I'll, I'll see him a bit. And then, yeah, I guess in Indy Next, probably my teammates, really. Um, Ch Jamie, James, and, and Hunter. Um, obviously I'm closest with those guys so um, yeah I mean I, I, I'm is there I a favorite really memory you've made with the team so far is there a what sorry is, is there a favorite memory that you've made with the team so far even though the season hasn't started yet oh yeah um, I mean so far it's just been like testing so we haven't really had much like time together mm -hmm. Uh, I guess the favorite memory would probably just be my first day driving with the team and getting used to it and and and, and getting used to the car at Indianapolis for the um, for the preseason testing uh, that Indy Next did. So I'll probably say that most likely because obviously that was the first time I'd driven the car, got used to the team, driven with my teammates, and really had a feel for what I was going to be embarking on this season. Right, and we can't wait to see what you do this season. Again, thank you so much for joining us today, Louie. It was awesome to have you in the crib, and we cannot wait to see you in St. Pete. Cool. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us again, Louie. So excited to see what you do this season. And that is a great way to wrap up this week's episode of In the Making. But make sure that you stay tuned with us next week because we are going to have a very special episode for you breaking down the road ahead as we get started here in two weeks in St. Pete. Once again, thank you so much for joining us on today's episode of In the Making. I am your host, Emily Smar, and I look forward to having you back in the crib next week.